today's show. We have you joining us later. To what, today is the 28th, yeah? Yeah. We leave tomorrow, yeah? Oh, yeah, tomorrow. Wow. Do you have fun in Vegas? Yeah. Vegas is fun, huh? It's like another world. Yeah. Especially when you don't live here, yeah. Yeah. If you live here, kind of, just like Hawaii, same like Hawaii. I mean, you live in Hawaii, Mm -hmm. you don't appreciate the beaches and the weather, but when you live somewhere else and you come to Hawaii, so nice. Hey, he's early. (laughs) (laughs) How you doing, man? You're dropping KO. Yeah, it's tough. Cool. Oh, wait. Did you, what, did you want the samurai? The, the, the bracelet. The black one. Yeah, I think he wanted that one. Yeah. I think oh, it's yours? You right. got the Ronin, yeah. All right. Here. Whatever, yeah? Yeah, so I made him the Ronin. What is this? Okay, that's for you. It's an MMA Junkie Radio t-shirt. How come you didn't say you too have a large hand? Because <laughs> his hand is larger. Benson's like, your little girly hand should be all right. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> One minute to air. One minute. Yeah. Some chocolates for you guys. This is the, the pamphlet has the properties in them. Okay. Yeah. Which one's this one? That one's uh, your wife's, I think. Thank you. And then that's Misha's. Just give it to her later. How much do you for this? Don't worry about it. It's a present for me. Oh, come on. Yeah, no worries. I mean, I'm winning. I would have tripled the price if I'm losing. This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McGarren Airport. Right on time. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> MMA Junkie Radio with Gorgeous George and Gold. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius. Immense transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. From from the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, and I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes. Ari's co-host, back east, handling all the producing duties. It's going to be Danny, of course. Nope. Oh, Sam. Sam, today's Tuesday. What's up, Sam? Thanks. Didn't mean to spit Appreciate on your shoes that. there or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> to my right, <laughs> former MMA fighter, the great Ensign Inouye returns to MMA Junkie Radio. What's up, everybody? Ensign, up, how you doing? Good to be here. Good to see you. Yeah. I missed you last time. I was in SoCal, yeah, man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 So what brings you back so quickly? Uh, um, it's like a month apart, right? One of my f- uh, best friend's birthdays. Oh, okay. So we come here and just gamble and. Have that gentleman right there? No, not his. He's one of my good friends. We we train together. So. Oh yeah, yeah. It looks it looks like you brought backup for this one. Yeah, this bodyguard. Is he? Any trouble? I just he takes <laughs> care. He just he just gives a double bicep pose and they, uh-huh. all, they all just stop. <laughs> he's not smiling, by the way. Can you get him to smile? Because I'm starting <laughs> to get scared over here. Oh, there it is. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to have you back. It's fight week. It's too bad you're not sticking around. I, I, I know, think, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you head back sooner than... Yeah, I go back to uh, the first, and then I leave back from Hawaii to Japan on the second, so... Yeah, after all the uh, relief you gave Dana the first time they were go- coming to Japan, letting <laughs> them know everything was good, yeah. I, I think he would have <laughs> comped you a couple tickets if he stuck around. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I I got a Vice shoot. You know, I'm doing some Vice shows. They're working for Vice. Yeah. HBO. Vice. Um, yeah. They really? actually have their own channel now. Yeah. So wow. I have to do a shoot on the fifth there. So I got to get back. Can yeah. you share what the details are about that? I mean, it's just a, um, they're pitting a amateur people like a, a boss of a company fights like a like a um, part timer. Last time they had like punk rock against uh, hip hop. The boss of a company? Yeah. What it's do you like mean? The boss of a company, a president of a company, okay. fights a, a person that's a, a part time. Oh, I see. So, you know like, for example, the Mandalay Bay, the president, yeah. would fight somebody that, uh, uh, maybe working. the guy that works the tickets. Yeah, over there. exactly. Really? <laughs> Crazy. Huh? Wow. Okay. Yeah. And when you said something about hip hop or. Yeah, the last episode we had on that show like was. Hip hop uh, mogul? Any hip hop singer okay. or hip, someone who loves hip hop fought someone who liked punk, because oh. they, you know they there's a ri- apparently there's a rivalry between those hip two. Hip hop and punk. I didn't know that. Did you? Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Why are they tripping? Why can't they just uh, like oh. each other? I don't know. But hip-hop there's not really like a crossover. There's not like a hip hop. Yeah. A big song. episode I did was uh, we did a episode on the underground market in uh, Kyushu, North J- South, South Japan, mm-hmm. and that got into real detail about the gangs and the yakuza like that. So that was pretty interesting. What's going to be your role? Are you uh, an I was advisor? Like a, or? No, I was like a, um, like a commentator or a, like someone who's the spokesperson and went in and interviewed the people and talked to the guys. I knew I know all the guys there, so mm-hmm. yeah, he's got the insides and they have like a little street fight in their group to get ranking and to get you know more respected within the group. So as, we actually as an got, individual we within that. the gang or as the gang itself? In the gang or in another gang for a street street cred. Right. Credibility, yeah. Okay. Pretty neat, you know. Almost like when you get initiated to a gang? Yeah, like yeah. Or just, just on the street you want more rank, you, you, you go into those fights and it's like they they just put cars around as a ring. Yeah. And the lights are the, str- the lights. And then when the ring ends, the fight ends, they, they honk the horn. Give us a street fight tip. If, if you're ever at a bar, like, well, what's something that you like to identify? What's a tip you could give to someone that doesn't really get into street fights and also doesn't want to get hurt? Always ready to fight, man. Huh? Always be ready to Always fight. Always ready? Don't put your hands on and say throw first. So, you know, say, say you that know again? how people go in and they, they have their hands on and say, yeah, what, do you want to fight? You want to fight? Right. So have your hands up. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. But, you, I mean, like this, though? I just be ready. Just man. be ready. Right, so kind of low, but ready. Don't be standing flat-footed. Okay. <laughs> Have one feet behind the other. Get ready to go. <laughs> you know, right. If you're gonna fight, there's some guys that's gonna take that offer. That's why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I would back in the day. Strike first. Yeah. Not now though. And what's the force field that you have around you where someone cannot get by? Because, like, let's say we're arguing. No, come on, man. You bumped into me. This, that, whatever. What about here. About there. Yeah. All right. So once I go, like, listen. Do we have a boom? I'd by then, I'm I'm hit. I'd step back. Oh, oh, you'd step back, and I give. I'd step back three times. Okay. And the third time he comes in, it's oh, so that's it's your way on. of saying you're you're, yeah, de- I don't you're wanna, de-escalating I don't, the problem. I'd rather not fight. Right. I don't like to fight. Hmm. I'm a lover. <laughs> 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 that guy's the punchy one, man. Yeah. <laughs> don't get him angry, man. All right. What's his name? Punchy. Pun- is it really? No, nah, it's actually oh. Steve Lau. He's a he's a police officer in Hawaii. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. But okay. he's so punchy. I named him Punchy. So it's Officer Punchy. He looks like he could bench press me right Fuck. now. Fuck. Yeah, dude. He can bench press the whole weight room. Yeah. <laughs> How come he doesn't fight? Why don't you manage him? He did get back into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe, maybe. You know, Justin McCauley had that show. You were there, right? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, okay. So there. Yeah, is that yeah. the latest show out in Hawaii? Yeah. Um, it remind me what it was called? Maximum? Uh, Pacific. What was show called? Pac-Max? Pac-Max. Pacific. Pacific. Pa- 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was how was the show? Yeah, it was, was good, it good? Man, it was good. Yeah, there's some good fighters. Scott Junk and and Justin yeah, McCall. Yeah, yeah, they came on the show and they talked about it. and They mentioned you were a, a featured guest. Yeah, they're they're good. It's Alan a good Belcher show. was going to be out there too. He was there. He mm-hmm. was there too. Yeah, very so cool. It so was a good show, and they also had Rumi Nasato out there. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of Japan fighters are trying to recruit to fight in that against the Hawaii boys. You so. going to get punchy on the card? Hope oh, maybe, man. Yeah. Maybe he's he's, getting, no. he's starting to get back in that. He just. He tries to be modest. Oh, does he? Yeah, with those arms, you can't be modest. <laughs> <laughs> we should have him come here and do a double bicep or something. Yeah, man, yeah, <laughs> we, we need to get him on. Maybe we can hear some stories from uh, uh, Honolulu. Have oh. you watching? I, I, well, you know, he, <laughs> some good he used to watch there. me when he was in elementary school, so. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you two meet? Um, he uh, came to my, uh, in, in the Ala Moana shopping center when he, he came to buy bracelets. By the way, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so we've talked yeah. about These this before, awesome. Destiny Forever. Go to destinyforever.com. 
And I got to tell you, Incense, excuse me, um, as be, until you lay your eyes on it, and I've seen Triggs from a distance, but actually wear it, I mean, this is really a fine piece of jewelry, it man. Is, it is, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's well a crafted. Yeah. It, it's no joke, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like, I, I mean, no disrespect, but I guess I was thinking maybe it was one of the elastic ones. You just kind of fit it over in your wrist, and okay, <laughs> you know, th this is what it is, but this is legit. And he, <laughs> ma he makes them all. That's the he thing. He makes them yeah, all I by make him. personally make them, yeah. Yeah. They believe that the... So thank you for bringing these. They believe the spirit of the maker goes into the bracelet, so... The spirit. The, the spirit. The spirit of the maker goes into the bracelet, so... Wow. Yeah. So when George brought it up to me, he goes, which one do you want? And I said... I kind of want whichever one Ensign feels I should wear. Uh -huh. So when you gave me the black one, I was like, this is awesome. But then when you pulled this one out, I kind of did go, damn. That, yeah, one's, that's that one's even cooler. Really <laughs> so when you came in and said that was his, I was kind of like, here you go. <laughs> I, I gave you your chance. No, this one's cool, that man. That was popular. I like this that's one. a real popular one, the Ronin. Yeah. And what's that one called? The Samurai. Samurai. Yeah. I thought I heard you say something about the Shogun. There's another one, but it's just gold string, and I named that one the Shogun. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so it's similar to that one. How long does it take you to make one? Um, About 20 minutes, maybe. 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, it, it really looks like it, it can hold its own. Yes. Yeah, there's a lifetime well guarantee Well crafted and, too, and everything. Yeah. Man, seriously, th from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much. You're welcome, man. Um, what, I guess, is your spirit defined? Uh, do you put, like, the... The um, samurai spirit in mind, and like you know, is it a different spirit in each different person, or do you have a an if, actual spirit that no represents Ensign in a way? If there's no specific ailment, no, just just my overall spirit, yeah, we'll go into it. Like, a lot of times, there's the health issues, arthritis. So I like to, when I make it for those people, I like to think about the arthritis and think. So it kind of put some energy on that in it. So but I feel like my back's being watched when I wear this. You know what I mean? Well, that's what it is. It's a protection in Japan. It's a protection. So if it if it breaks, it's actually taking something in place, of thinking bro block something that was supposed to come to you. I got into two car accidents, and I I, I uh, totaled Mercedes Benz. You know how strong those cars are. Yeah. So I totaled two. Well, the Benz had one from the side door. Bad, I heard. It tears no. a little bit, and then boom, they fly up. Really? Yeah. So you're getting that. In Something Ooh, tells me he'll he'll that. he'll break that over his head. <laughs> well, we're safe today. We got punchy. Punchies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's giving us that look like shut the fuck up already, right? <laughs> Stop talking about my muscles. <laughs> How many days? Uh, can we talk about? You said you were having some good luck on this trip. Yeah, doing good. Yeah. All right. So what yeah. have you been playing? Um, we played baccarat with a friend. All right. And uh, pretty much uh blackjack, um, Texas hold'em, trick card poker. Jumping all over the place. Mm -hmm. Doing pretty good, man. I mean, just... Baccarat's you know. for the whales. Whales are the, the... That's a nickname for big ballers, like big gamblers. Yeah, well, that guy we went with was a huge baller. Oh, yeah. How much was he playing per hand? Oh, Can you share? God. Yeah, he was, he, he was carrying $5,000 chips. And when he was playing and he felt something, he was playing like 50000 a hand. Like What? And you know the you know those bets that are kind of sort of sucker bets, but they're big odds, the, the ties and the... The, the pairs and mm -hmm. the ties. He in was Baccarat? Playing, yeah, he's playing okay. like thousands on those. Damn. Man. He was How do you do? He was winning, yeah. Yeah. Do you get tense watching him? Yes. Yeah, I get like that too. Yeah, and, and you know, because he's a high roller, we can go in there and play whatever we want. You know, I wouldn't be even been in that, that, that room, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're playing, like say, I'm playing my max at 100 of hand. I never do that, but because we're with him, we're playing 100 of a hand. Just to represent And we're just a watching his cards, you know. Like when we played blackjack, we went to the high rollers blackjack. He's playing like 20000 50000 a hand. And we're playing like 100 or even $50 a hand. And we're just, fuck my cards. <laughs> Want him to get good cards, you know. <laughs> it's nervous. And then he'll look at me sometimes at backer. What do you think, Ants? Player or dealer? A peddler or banker? I'm like... Fuck, I don't want to say Ooh, shit. That's the worst, yeah. right? Because we say player and it comes up banker. Does he give you a yeah. look? Like, what the? What? No, no, he's so cool, man. Is he? Yeah, but <laughs> it's nerve-wracking, man. Yeah. And he asks you, like, you don't want to know what like, I don't even know. But you always answer? You give him an answer? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And then if he wins, he's so cool that it, you don't even bother with the high five or fist bump. It's no, fist bump all the time, man. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, okay. And he wins a lot, so he bump a lot of fists. All right. So, yeah. That's cool. Is yeah. that is that part of the trip over? Or are you guys gonna hit the tables again tonight? 
um, he already went home, so we're just with the boys. So I'm actually this trip is about my my best friend Darren Suzuki. He's it's his birthday, fiftieth. Mm -hmm. So we're just having oh, a, wow. a time with the boys in in Vegas. Yeah. How many, what uh, what do you guys do? Wait, just tonight's last night. Yeah. Yeah, tonight's like a night. Like a nice dinner, or do you guys uh, club it, or what do you? No, do? you know, like because it's funny because we talk about you know like birthday party. You think about strippers and all this. We we just stay in the casino, man. Yeah, we don't go anywhere. We don't have any no shows. Strip clubs, no nothing? strip clubs, nothing. No strip clubs. No Spearman Rhino. They shouldn't send a limo for no, you. No, no. We just stay in the casino, and eat and gamble. Eat and gamble, and just hang out with the boys. Do you have Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. What a burger. Wait. What's it called? I don't know. It's it's called Wagyu beef burger. Okay. Is that what it's called? It's definitely called. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I'm looking forward to eating that tonight. It's mm -hmm. it's only room service though. Uh, really? Yeah, and the guy, our friend, that the big baller, he got us a villa in the in the Mirad. So I, apparently, he's it's only in the room service in the villas. So nice, man, it's so good though. What'd you order? Just the uh, a burger, or was it just else? that burger with, with onion rings? Uh huh. Nice greasy onion rings. It's so good. What do you wash it down with? Wash it down with uh, water. Yeah, no shake or nothing like that. No, oh, that would be good, and you know, huh? I know. <laughs> <laughs> we have a place called Burger Bar, so uh -huh. when I go there, I I, I get a alcohol a shake with alcohol in it. Oh, re yeah. shake with alcohol? Yeah, some good Damn. ones. They're not too strong, but I guess I just give myself the little. Oh, I don't drink alcohol. Thrill. Yeah, so yeah. Alcohol. and I don't as much as I used to, but when I do, I just try and pick my spots. Oh, I see, I see. Shakes, I'm I'm done with shakes though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When's the last time you had a drop of alcohol? Who? Maybe, maybe like. 10, 15 years ago, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you had, if somebody goes, hey, try this shake, and they didn't know you drank, you drink it, and then you find oh, out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because so I don't drink alcohol, so even a little touch alcohol, I'll, I'll taste it. Oh, really? I'll taste You'll it. But if I did, didn't did taste it and I drank the whole thing, I'd turn beet red. Yeah. You wouldn't be mad at the individual? Like, hey, man. I mean, if he didn't know, though. No, not at all. Oh, I see. If he knew and he was trying to do it, I mean, I wouldn't be mad, but be like, uh. Do you ever get even? In a fun way, the same all way the you time, got you. Yeah? Okay. All the time, man. All the time. I heard Hawaiians have good practical jokes. Oh, yeah, we do all the time. I even get even when I don't need to get even. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? You're on the yeah. offensive. <laughs> What's he all? knows. He's at the bun end of it a lot, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. He's a good one to get, man. What do you guys, uh, what kind of jokes do you play on each other? I don't know. What do we play on each other, man? Oh, I get videos of them on Facebook. And oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you want a good one? We were talking about one before the show started. Yeah, what's a good one? You know the wh what a pool noodle is? No. So it's like a long thing of foam that uh -huh. kids take in the, into the oh, swimming yeah, pool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get a friend who has virtual reality, right? I don't understand technology too okay, well. Okay, so yeah, what they play that, I saw Talking that. about the Samsung commercial? Yeah. Okay. So they put them on. They look like a big nerd. They're like, ooh, like, right? So you do that, and then you go, you got to try this out. It's awesome. So they put it on, and when they put it on, take the noodle on. Bash them in the nuts. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, awesome. But I don't even know what happens when you put that on. Like, you can't see anything. All you see is what's oh, in the Oh, okay, thing. okay. So, so they're sitting there going world, like yeah. this, and then you just grab that noodle, wind that it up. That is a pretty good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Huh? That is a pretty good, a good one. <laughs> I, I retired from that nut game back in high school. Me and my buddies just whenever you, you know. <laughs> you'd be walking with your books or whatever, going to another class, someone, uh -huh. bam, would get you. <sighs> All right, yeah, you get them back. Do that for a few years, and then there was one time, and when I retired, you would have thought it was one of those where you got <laughs> boom, right? Uh -huh. Instead, it was a grazer. It was one of these. Ooh, it was like that. Those hurt too, though. I know. It was like that. <laughs> and I just remember going, ah, you missed it. Oh. <laughs> and then I collapsed in the fetal position like a baby, man. I just laid there for about five minutes. I was late, late to my next class, and I just go, I can't play this. Now, that's. This game just got old very quickly, and that was it for that game. A grazer. So that what <laughs> like he just that. described, I think I'd rather take my chance with just, boom, impact, hoping that my legs, my nuts, my dick, everything, we'll my the belly the of the takes a little yeah. bit yeah, of the brunt, yeah, 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 yeah. whereas just some <laughs> is not good. He's, he's squinting, squinting already <laughs> just remembering this. It, it was yeah. bad, man. It was bad. I remember, <laughs> like, coughing and just. Here's one that doesn't I, involve I, I actually retired from that game. Whenever you see somebody. Who's taller? Than I, obviously, not knowing, you know, you're not the same size. But you go stand back to back, and that's when you need to fart, and then you just fart when you're back to back. And what's very important is when he turns around, you got to give him a smile. Like, 
something like that. <laughs> you, so gotta that have ready, you have gas ready yeah, to that's go. Yeah, you then. have gas. So oh, you just okay. pick out the tallest guy in the room and you go, I think I'm taller. I'm just as tall as you. Back to back, fart. Done. Now Easy you prank. about farts. You know what's funny? We're walking to the villa at the, um, at the, going to our room. And then you have like little checkpoints where girls are like sitting there, you know, doing their computer thing. Mm-hmm. We were turning the corner. I didn't realize that there's a girl there, so I fart roll out. <laughs> And we turn the corner, like literally like 10 feet, we turn the corner and the girl's sitting right there. Oh. And she's looking down at the computer and she heard that. You could have heard at the end of the hall. <laughs> and me and my friend are kind of like hitting each other. Like, they're, they're like why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? We're, talking, we're like trying to walk. We turn the corner holding her. It was hilarious, man. Damn. I think at that point you got to own it, right? You take a bow maybe or something. Yeah, I was, about, I I was so. going to say sorry, but she pretended like she didn't hear it either. So mm. we just pretended like we didn't do it, although there was a big fart. Like two seconds earlier. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. All right. So we are taking calls. 866-522-2846. UFC 209 happens this Saturday in Las Vegas. Uh, t- excuse me. Yeah. Tyrone Woodley defending his belt against Stephen Thompson. It's a replay of a fight they had at UFC 200 that ended in a draw, but the champion walked away with his belt. So really for Woodley, even though he drew, I mean, who doesn't want the win? You get your win bonus, this, that, whatever. I think the most important thing is in that draw, he did get to walk away with the belt, and Stephen Thompson was not tabbed the champion. So Stephen Thompson's getting another crack at it, and we're just days away. And, of course, in the co-main event, Habib Nurmagomedov, undefeated 25 and – sorry, 24-0, and 0, I think he's at, going for 25-0. and 0. And uh, he takes on Tony Ferguson, 19-3, and 3, only lost one time in the UFC. And this is for the interim belt because – we don't know what Conor McGregor's doing, so they're creating the interim belt in the lightweight division. I guess the winner gets Conor. Who knows? That's just too hard and too complicated to get into because it can go in so many directions. One thing I noted, though, I saw the countdown. All right? Um, I separated it into – because you can watch the whole episode or you can separate it in two online. And I did see both of them. Uh, one, the part that features Woodley and Thompson. It was very entertaining. And I also saw the other one with Habib and Tony Ferguson. However, the one thing that stood out to me, and I know this is going to sound silly, but the YouTube views was double on Nurmagomedov and Ferguson. Oh, really? Ferguson said That's this on a conference call the other day. He said, this is the real main event. And Woodley tried to chime in. Oh, no, he said, this is the real main event. I don't know why we're not the main event. And then I heard Woodley chime in and say, That's because I'm the champion and I'm defending. You know, so it's just that he said it so subtle that Ferguson just kept talking and talking and talking. So I thought it was kind of interesting. It was just a one-minute soundbite. I heard that because it, it was misleading. It said Ferguson and Woodley get into it. They didn't get into it. It was just Ferguson saying that. He got asked by a reporter. So, But that stayed with me. And then when I saw the YouTube, and I've seen more traction going towards the uh, Nurmagomedov mm-hmm. and Ferguson fight. Mm-hmm. How about that? Yeah, really, yeah. 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 Now, I don't know if a lot of it I, – I keep saying I think – Nurmagomedov's Madoff's on the verge of being a superstar. I think he All is he needs well. is the belt. And the reason why is because all of Russia's behind him. I think part of Europe is, you know, they're, they're representing a few belts now. They own a few belts, Europe does. And so they're saying, hey, look, you know, this part of the world can bring it. Uh, I think Ferguson's also got a following through the Ultimate Fighter. Um, and, you know, Tom- Thompson and Woodley, I mean, they had a great fight. It was just baffling to me why so much attention went to the other your reasons for it? Well, I think it's because they're tied into a story, and it's a very popular story. It's Conor McGregor. Whoever wins that fight will challenge him for his title. I think if they made up their mind with GSP and said the winner of this fights GSP, then I think they would have that little storyline as well. I think any storyline you can add to that will help. But, um, I mean, you got two guys that just go back and forth, back and forth. A little bit more respect, I think, from Woodley and Thompson. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, I mean, that's kind of what sells around here, right? The ultimate question. On Saturday night, both fights are about to start at the same time in two different ballrooms. Ooh. And you're standing there. You're standing there with Ensign anyway. Okay. Punchy's with you guys as well. You guys have drinks in hand. Yours is just a, a soda. And uh, you guys are wanting to see some fights, and we got you the best tickets possible. But you realize they're starting at the same time. Which one do you go in? Dude. The other one, you can only hear about it later and watch a replay. You won't be able to get it until you get home, watch it on DVR. You won't know what happened other than the result, obviously. That'll get out. But you can only watch one in person. Which one would you go to? Man, that is a good question. 
I think I go into Ferguson and uh, I'm gonna go How about you? Yeah, I think so too. That sucks because the and other that's guys. That's no are disrespect to the other. I know. Team. I think they're gonna have a great fight as if well. If they heard this, I think they'd feel disrespected. Who wouldn't, honestly? But yeah, I mean, there really is something to this, right? Mm -hmm. The other guys have built it up a little bit more. Woodley and Thompson have been very respectful. For one, they've been in there, so there's respect there because you shared time in the cage. But still, really, uh, Thompson's such a nice guy, and, and for all intents and purposes, so is Woodley. The other two are really starting to spit the venom at each other. The you one I mean? deciting factor for me is I've already seen one fight, right? And it began in a draw. Yeah. So that's big for me, too, yeah. And yeah. that Khabib and uh, Ferguson hasn't happened it's fresh. yet. Fresh. So. I like fresh matchups. Yeah. And Khabib's undefeated. To be in your mid-20s and to be undefeated, that's – that's something else. Now, yeah. something I'm hearing, and I'd like to get confirmation. If it ain't on Junkie, I don't believe it. But there are other credible websites, and I started seeing some trickle effect through social media that Habib's dad, or maybe part of his entourage, well, has his not been let into well. to, to the country. Yeah. Okay. Too, but Just can't get in. There's a little, or... Adjust to that. Another thing I mentioned. Tony, did I hate it? And they yeah, cry, and then they prep themselves for it, and then they go in little by little, like Bugs Bunny when he's getting inside yeah, that yeah. that little cauldron, and they're gonna cook him. Uh, Tony Ferguson just went boom, all the way down to here it goes, and he just frowned and look and looked stern, and he goes, "It's all mental," and he didn't say one other word. In what? fact, I don't even think he said it at that time. I think they just it was an overlay, you I know. Believe that. And he just sat there. I'm telling you, Ensign, when you start getting to that championship level, you can just tell. Who are the ones that are willing to go that much yeah. further, right? Yeah. He didn't even hyperventilate when he went in. Dude, it was crazy. Yeah. He just went in there with no problems. <laughs> no problems at all. He just sat there for 10 minutes, and when it was time to get out, he got out. There wasn't like this whole, when's it over? What's the countdown? You know? Yeah. That dude's tough, man. Yeah. Straight fucking tough. That's, you're, what, you're that's what makes this matchup even more interesting. Yeah. Your yeah. mind can sometimes be your worst enemy. Yeah. I'm telling you, that was, that was very impressive. All right, folks, we're going to take this break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM. Rush Day 3, we have Ensign Inouye in, in-house. In we're also going to be joined later on by Jenny Andrade, UFC Octagon Girl, who is uh, a multiple nominee uh, for the Ring Card uh, of the Year, Ring Card Girl of the Year Award. So this isn't her first rodeo. She's done it before. She's outside she's, right now. Yeah, she's already and nice here. of our friend to come make sure she's okay. She's a little early. So she'll be joining us as well, and we'll talk to her uh, on this episode of MMA Junkie Radio. We'll also take your calls at 866-522-2846. Stay close.
They are the Wright Brothers of Mixed Martial Arts. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Junkie Radio. Let's hit the phone lines. And if you want to join the party, it's 866-522-2846. If you have a question for Jenny Andrade, she'll be on in the second hour. The, uh, the whole show is co-hosted by Ensign anyway. And while you're listening to the show, check out DestinyForever.com. Uh... I, I, I can now tell you that this is some incredible bracelets that uh, Ensign makes uh, by hand, and he brought us this gift. Mine's called Samurai. I love it. It's all black. I love the black and red colors. I think some of it stems from my 49ers have some red in it. Uh, Manchester United has uh, red and black in it. They're called the Red Devils, for crying out loud. I've just always been close to those colors. Modern A, who, by the way, is playing in the finals of CIF on Saturday at the Honda Center. They took out Chino Hills, and Chino Hills is a really good team. They beat them in overtime, so they'll be playing in the finals. They have some red in it. USC has some red in it. So I've always loved the red, black, and white, and this is a beautiful one. This is the one I I would recommend, not just because I have it. I just think it's tight. It's really, really cool. Uh, Again, made by hand, and you can go to destinyforever.com. Goes, what do you have in your hand? I would recommend not getting this one because I want to be the only one that has it. (laughs) Uh, I have Ensign's book, which I've been reading, and I honestly don't know how far I'm into it because – there's a lot of short stories and i just kind of like flip through it and then whatever catches my eye i go at it and it leads to another and another so i'm skipping around the book i think i'm about 75 percent through but every time i think i'm getting close to the end something pops up and catches my eye and i haven't read it yet so i go back and i read it and it's an awesome book you can see you can get this on his website or you can get it on amazon.com and what's the name of your bracelet does mine have a name ronin ronin, ronin okay yeah, yeah. Very cool. All right, (laughs) uh, I'm going to take some calls from here goes and then get yours ready, all right? So we'll bust through yours. But let's get the callers. They've been holding the longest. We'll start with Jersey Mike. What's up, Jersey Mike? Hey, not too much. What's going on, guys? Not much. Um, I I just wanted to get your guys' take on something, and i got a quick question for Ensign. Um, I want to get your guys' take on on the whole Greg Hardy situation. What do you guys think? Do you think he's going to – do you think he would sign with a bigger – not necessarily the UFC – but a Bellator or World Series, or do you think he would have to take a couple fights at a, a smaller promotion? That's the former Dallas Cowboy, who uh, yeah. defensive defensive so, tackle or something like that. So I think it was uh, Bigfoot that came out and said that he's seen him train, and he thinks mm-hmm. that he's actually going to be fairly decent mm-hmm. as a fighter. Um, yeah, I would think he's he done would, with he football. Would start, he would start with a bigger organization, right? And here's the th- thing: if I had time to Google him. But I think he comes with some baggage, and that's why yeah. he's done with the NFL, right? Or is he on a hiatus, or is he suspended? I don't know exactly what his status is with, with pro football, but right. uh, I, I don't know. Okay. So, um, listen, man, I, I, I think right away, I, I don't know if the U- I, mean, I can never gauge the UFC. Like, on the one hand, they'll take a, a pro wrestler who's never had a fight before mm-hmm. uh, and, and give him a shot. It looks like he may even get a second shot after that atrocious display he had, you know, about six months ago. <laughs> um, and, and you know, and they come up with these interim titles or whatever. And but then there's other times when you know they, I mean, come on, selling for 4.2 million. The TV contracts that they sign everywhere, you know, they're on Fox, they've been on Spike, they've been on Fuel, they've been on uh, you know Fox Sports One. I mean, they they really behave themselves like a like a major promotion brand should. So I I just don't know if they'll want to distance themselves or what they'll want to do. Um, uh, I, so I I just can't give you a guess, but. If, if you're pinning me against the wall and you're saying, give me an answer, I would say maybe someone like World Series uh, is where he would start off and the other promotions would wait and watch. If he's if he's awesome and maybe he clears his name of anything that's attached to him, maybe a 4-0 and a 5-0, and once the contract or two is up, maybe they bring him in. I mean, there is a foot, there is a blueprint with Herschel Walker, right? With yeah. He did that um, at Bellator, so maybe Bellator takes a chance. I don't know. All right. I, I – uh I just got a quick question for him. <clears throat> um, I can't remember which fight it was, if it was Mark Kerr or uh, Heath Perrin. Uh, I remember it was an early stoppage, I thought it was. Um, you were you were in kind of a, a really nasty Americana, and he, whoever it was, leaned over and said something to you, and I, I was wondering if you remembered anything. Yeah, the dialogue, you know, what, yeah. What was said to you. Well, he had been in Americana. It was Heath hearing that stoppage was early. The reason why the stoppage was early because I had a pink eye in both eyes. Um, the Americana, um, he got me in the Americana, and then uh, I think my elbow popped about three or four times. Oof. And uh, he wanted the stoppage. He wanted the ref to stop it. 
and he looked over at the ref and the ref looked at me and I said no and then he looked over at me and said it's going to break I'm going to break it and I and I just looked at him and said if you can break it break it but apparently he couldn't but then from, from, from there usually with an Americana you want to keep it lower from there I remember it, he, had it, he had it really high you know it was a very high Americana did he do that so he didn't break it no he was trying to break it if he ever, if you ever hear him say he wasn't trying to break it, that's bullshit. He was trying to break it. Um, if you notice the position, he didn't have total side control. I had one leg wrapped up, so he did. He had like a half half side control, half mount, so he didn't have that right leverage. Um, I believe that he was trying to just get an easier win, and he didn't. Yeah. There you go. All right, Jersey All right, Mike. You. Great question, man. Thank you. All right, let's go to uh, Brandon in Louisville. What's up, Brandon? Hey, gentlemen. How's it going today? Good, man. How about you? Doing all right. So, uh, real quick, Joe, y'all got to be careful of those practical jokes. Did you hear about the uh, North Korean assassination? The what? The North Korean assassination. So, it's his What's brother that? or something like that? Or Is that a relative, the, relative yeah, right? Yeah, Anti-aircraft yeah. fire or whatever? I, I, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. So, the half-brother of the North Korean dictator is in exile in Vietnam. I heard about that. Wow. Okay, so they uh, allegedly, now there's North Korea, they're not sure who's buying it, but it's more than likely North Korea. They uh, sent one of their agents, and he convinced these two 20-something Vietnamese women that they were on one of those hidden camera shows. And part of that bit was, go spray this guy in the face with this water. Turns out it wasn't water. It was a fast-acting neurotoxin. You heard about that? Yeah. I just know that. Uh, wow. I, I didn't know the story behind it. One of the girls well, actually walked up behind him and had a cloth and covered his face with it. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going that route, but Brandon. I'm just hitting people in the balls. <laughs> but thanks for the warning. Yeah. We weren't going to take it that far, brother. Uh, but yesterday, y'all talked about... Uh, draws and the gambling, uh, you know, whether it's a good appeal or not. Something to look out for with the new 10-8 rules, depending on what states are going with it and what aren't. Mm, I think most of I think most of them are on board with uh, calling the fights that way. But, uh, yeah, we did bring it up that the, the fact that the 10-8 is going to come more frequently, it may present the draw opportunity for a gambler. Uh, you know, it may be more lucrative because – at 80 to 1, and I think we went off 45 to 1. That was the lowest one we saw, right? 45? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to be wrong 46 times. But then somebody else called in, or, or we went to social media, and I guess it was brought to our attention that the draw, the draw just doesn't come very frequently. Stop messing around. Who knows? I mean, they're basing it off stats prior to 2017. That's when the rules changed. And I, we just saw we, we almost saw them with D. Randami and Holm. Yeah. They, if they take the point away when she was reaching for the fence, that would have been a draw. So I'm just uh, talking Thompson and Woodley. Though. Yeah, well, see, then it would take forever to, to get to, I mean, that's main events of pay-per-views or Fox Cards 2? Uh, I think everything. Everything. Well, I, uh, they do about they do about 40 events per yeah. year. So I guess in it's one like year, once, if you get one year, draw, it. it could could work. I would rather take a chance, though, I think on three-round fights than five-round fights. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, it's probably I, more in your favor. I think so, yeah. Brandon? All right, well, no, like I said, I, I just think it's something that's going to occur more and more often this year as they're adjusting to the new criteria. Um, great show today, guys. Great lineup. You got Infinite now. Uh, is Jenny going to be on, or is she hanging out with Punchy for the rest of the show? <laughs> <laughs> no, she'll be on. She's already here, actually, but um, she'll be on uh, at 11. <laughs> all right, guys, I'll talk to you all later. All right, we'll see you. Slight delay there, Ensign. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Marco and Waco. What's up, Marco? Marco from Waco, Rural, que pasa datos and aloha en su inue. What's up? Hey, uh, a little bit more to that uh, neurotoxin story. So, do, the two cans got two components of TX gas that by themselves are inert. But once they spray the guy with the two different cans and the element got combined, that's when the DX guy get, got active and killed the guy. This is really, right out of a James Bond movie, dude. Like, <laughs> it, is crazy. it is crazy, man. <laughs> I I, uh, I only knew that he passed away. I didn't know the details. Wow. Uh, two quick questions, man. Uh, first, uh, uh, 
Javid Nurmagomedov father and his cousin were denied visas, you know, to come to the United States. How much is that going to mess with Kavir? I mean, uh, everybody knows that Kavir worshiped his father, and this is the most important fight of his career. And again, so like, how, how, how that will affect you somebody of your corner or your camp was not allowed to go to one of your fights, man? Well, Marco just tuned in, uh, apparently, because we, we just covered that. And Ensign was saying, he it, speaking for him personally, it wouldn't affect him. Um, I'm I'm wondering, like you, Marco, there is an atta- a really close bond between him and his dad. And uh, how? It, it, what I'm wondering is, once we get to Friday and Saturday, the weigh-in's done, the fight's done. It's it's one-on-one, my man. But right now, what's it weighing on him? Like, is he spending time rather than focusing on the cut or his last-minute, wor- you know, uh, other stuff? Like, is that mental stress weighing on him right now as he's mm-hmm. trying to pick up the phone and maybe make things happen, or is he letting others handle it? We don't know. Well, Ensign made a good point, and he said at that level, that high-caliber level of athlete, it shouldn't. And the one thing that popped in my head right away was Brett Favre and Michael Jordan. When they both lost their fathers, Mm -hmm. the next day they had one of the greatest performances of their careers. Yeah. And uh, last question. Quick update on Terry Eating. How is that dude uh, doing? Because, you know, we got news of uh, he he threw himself against the boss or something like that uh, there in, 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 uh, in England. And, uh, you know, he's going through depression. I mean, uh, the, the reports are, like, it's fair. So what do you guys got on that? What do you guys catch us tomorrow? Okay, thank you for the call. I'm hearing fighting for his life, coma. Yeah. But that's all I know. Um, and it is unfortunate that it got to that. What You know, did his uh, MMA career influence him getting to that point? Or the one thing I, I want to make sure people understand is I, I know this sport is dangerous, and I know there's going to be repercussions going forward, you know, whether it be TBI or other So um, it, it's a whole other conversation. But, you know, and the NFL, boxing, and, and MMA, I, I hope they also realize, the athletes also realize that uh, some of them may be predisposed to future stuff like getting, you know, Parkinson's or, or, or any other types of illnesses going forward, whether you may have had head contact or not. Again, a whole other deep conversation that we can have later in the break or, uh, or later in the show. Yeah, nobody knows better than himself, the people around him, his friends and family. Mm-hmm. It's probably something that didn't just spring up. Yeah. So for Maybe us MMA really saved him, and that might have happened yeah, 10 for, years ago. For Who us knows? to really comment on it, it's just uh, it's a little irresponsible. Right. All right. Uh, we got to go to break. Uh, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93. Niggas wonder how I came with the style of mine.
to link into the MMA Junkie Radio Network. Hit us up on Twitter.com at MMA Junkie Radio. This is MMA Junkie Radio. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. Hey, Sam, keep playing that song. I like it, man. I'm in the new edition now. When I was a kid, this is the boys. I didn't like these guys too much. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not the boys. That's, yeah, this that's is down my heart. New edition. Oh, who is it? The boys, isn't this it? This is the boys. Yes, go The see. boys, that's it? That's just their nickname? Yeah, yeah they the had boys. A lot of hits. The boys? The boys? Come <laughs> you on, never heard of the boys? I've never heard of the boys. Isn't it like Backstreet Boys, Beach Ooh, Boys, yeah. Something Boys? Yeah. These are just the boys? Yeah. Backstreet Boys with a lot of melanin. The boys. <laughs> this is a new edition. No. This I mean, don't really quote me. Maybe edition. somebody came from there or something, but these Sounds are like, like little Ralph. kids. Sounds like Ralph nah, Tresman's they, voice. They, they, they had the, the whole genre of boy groups that came after New Edition. The Boys was one of the better ones that came after New Edition. Yeah, but that's it. It's just The Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Heavy D found them. The Boys. They okay. may not even have a Z at the end. Just an S. Just an S? Yeah. Is yeah. it a T-H-E or is it D-A? <laughs> nah, I think it was the boys or the boys. It was, it was everything spelled uh, g- grammatically correct. Yeah. <laughs> They're just dude. Kids. What was I doing during these years? I don't remember this band at all. You know what's crazy is you had their CD. No, I did. Yes, you did. Wow. That's how. How do you think they, I know they, about them? They had okay. some hits. Play me another song because if they had so many hits, you got uh, something I'm, else now. Hang on. Scrolling. Hang on. The boys. Yeah, dude. The boys. Heard it. Heavy D, man. It's usually like the Oak Ridge Boys, the Beach Boys, Boys to Men, Boys to Men, the yeah. Backstreet Boys. It's something to identify you, but these guys were lazy. They just said, ah, let's just be the boys. <laughs> Why don't we start a band? Let's be the guys. Yeah, the guys. I don't think that name's been taken. So, you have let's another see. song? or? Yep, I got you. All right, sure. Uh, let's go here with it. The girls. Some some of that stuff. I'm just playing with you. That's not the boys. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the men. Is this the yeah, boys? No, nah, this is not the boys. There's another group called Boys. So that, that was the problem. That's why I had to put the well, thugs. Why don't we start the next hour with the all boys? Right, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. We got Instant in the way in the house here. Uh, Goes, you want to spit out some questions for him? Yeah. So okay, these are. I wanna. I want Ensign to talk a little bit about certain stories that were in his book, but I don't want to give them all away because I want you to buy the book because it's an awesome book. But one thing that I've always wondered about you was a lot of people know about how before every fight you would write a letter to your family, and it was basically kind of like a goodbye letter because mm-hmm. you you had that as a result of the possibility that you could die in the ring. Mm-hmm. Did you ever write one of those letters for anything outside of MMA? Something where you were going to go do something where you felt you could maybe not come back from that? No. No? No. Well, that answers my question. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, if you're if, if in my in a normal life, if there's something that's going to be that dangerous, you avoid it, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's what's so special about fighting, yeah. All right. <laughs> How about... Nope. You left the <laughs> surprise. <laughs> you like, oh, 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 okay. On to the well, next I was think Because I'm, I'm thinking like the trips maybe to Fukushima or something like that, if you ever just had one of those. Well, even <laughs> even trips like that were calculated. I, I yeah. had a dosimeter, had a Geiger corner. All right. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, the problem is we only have like two minutes, and I know these answers are going to be long. The last one wasn't very long. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the... We're, one of the callers called in and talked about the dialogue between you and Heath Herring mm-hmm. during the match. Mm-hmm. Um, another time where a fighter kind of whispered something to you was Guy Mesger. It was after Guy Mesger fought your brother Egan. Mm-hmm. Um, can you kind of tell that story and how all that came about? Yeah, well, when he beat Egan, I went in the ring to check on Egan, and he came up to me and said, remember, it's not personal. And I looked at him and said, well, what do you mean? You beat my brother. It's cool, man. He goes, no, what am I going to say after this? I'm like, what are you going to say? Because I'm going to have to call you on in a bad way. I said, you know I'm retired. That's when I was retired. And he said, uh, I said, don't do it. if you." He said, I don't want to do it, but they, I have to do it. I said, don't do it if you don't want to do it. And that's when I held onto his hand and we kind of went into the corner. I said, don't do it if you don't want to do it. He goes, I got to do it. And I kind of understood his situation, the way Pride used to do things, used to strong arm people like that. You had just retired, like, the card before, yes. right, or something? It was very soon. Yes. And then, so they wanted me to come back because I was a big draw in Japan. So 
I understood his situation. I said, oh, fuck, do it. Then, if you got to do it. I understood Guy's situation. That's a little, I would say, maybe underhanded, right, of pride trying, because they know your stance that you don't want to retire, yet they're trying to put you in a situation where you they feel like now you have to take the fight. Well, they were playing that stupid entertainment thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what's happening now with the whole UFC yeah. where there's a call out, you talk shit about somebody that draws the attention. So they wanted him to call me out in a bad way saying like, you know, I beat his other brother, he's the other younger brother, the fag, I want to fight, whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he toned it down. Out of respect to me, he turned it, toned it down. And I found out it was Pride that put him up to it, yeah. So they I got paid good money for apology from Pride, though. They gave you the mic after really? the call out, right? So yeah. what did you say on the mic? I just said that I'm retired and a stupid call out like that's not going to make me come out of retirement. So yeah. when we do this, when we come back, because there's a second part to the story mm -hmm. and it's Ensign trying to find out who actually made <laughs> this yeah. call to, yeah. to do the call out. Yes. I just heard something about a payment for and, an apology. And, yeah. and this is what's going to get George's mouth watering. There was a deadline involved. Ooh, uh, deadline. That's, <laughs> that's gangster right there. <laughs> I love that. All right. This is MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We're going to take this uh, quick break and a sports update. When we come back, we'll have Jenny Andraj on the show. And we'll also get uh, part two to the answer to Goza's question. I also had a follow-up question as well. We're having a good time here with Ensign anyway in studio. And don't forget, this week is UFC 209, so keep it locked on MMA Junkie throughout the week. We have reporters that are everywhere catching up with all these great fighters that are all over the card. We'll be right back after this break.
Oh, this is amazing. From K side to ring. of mixed. This is MMA Junkie Radio. Oh. Cry over for nominees. Excuse me. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you, remember I told you the awards are this yeah, week too. Yeah, so they fly all the nominees over. All the nominees, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. She's uh, been nominated three times, and so she's up against Ariani and Brittany and uh, Mercedes, and mm -hmm. I forget who the other one was. Who, who uh, was the other Carly one? Carly Baker. Carly two? Baker from uh, England. England. Okay. Yes. And uh, this is a very important for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, I voted. <laughs> Goes? I voted. Yeah, yeah a you. lot of MMA junkie I loves you. I voted for the for MMA junk too. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I mean, do you do you already have your dress picked out for the event? Yes, yeah. yes. Surprise, my dress. Surprise. Yes. <laughs> okay. So so beautiful. What uh, is it? Short or long or? No, uh, long, long, yeah. long. Yeah. What long. color? Oh my Surprise. God! Surprise! Okay. <laughs> but my my favorite color. Yeah. Um, yes. Do you have a designer that gives you the dress? Yes. Or do you? Yes. Make, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the designer. Uh, Brazilian. Brazilian, yes, from my city, Ribeirão Preto. The name is Neide Amaral. Amaral. The same to the last year. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. Is that a man or a woman? The uh, designer. Woman. Woman. What's woman. the name? Neide Amaral. Neide Amaral. Yes. Uh, is it your friend or just a designer? Yes, my friend. My friend. Uh, my friend. Uh, ten ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So much friend and the. Uh, the dress is so beautiful. How do you how do you choose the dress? Uh, do you just look through a book and say I want that, or do you imagine no, it? No, imagine, imagine. I like I like here, I like here, I like here. No, yes, <laughs> just. Do you I ever, know. Do you ever talk to the other girls and kind of go, so what are you wearing? Like, do the, do you want to know what they're wearing as well? Do you guys talk? No, no, no. O only me and the, the stylish. Oh, mm. so super surprise. Nobody yes, knows. Yes, super surprise. Okay. And my mother. <laughs> only me, my mother, and the stylish. Is it more elegant or sexy? Both. Both? both. Okay. Both. Yes. Oh, very cool. <laughs> and then what about jewelry? You have special jewelry for the event? J no, no, because the, the dress, all the... Sparkle? Yes. Oh. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Th wait for that. Transpar transparent? Transparent? Do you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Did you watch the Oscars? Oh, my God. <laughs> the transparent everywhere? Yes. Transparent's your favorite color? <laughs> yes. Oh. Wow. Did you watch the Oscars? Uh, the last, e last night? Uh, Sunday. No, no. The Oscars, there was some nice dresses there, because too. Because uh, the... What's the girl you like? Uh, the same time to my flight. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the name of the girl, that, the the actress that you said you wouldn't make out with if you had a chance? Oh, who was that? I, I kind of made it up on the spot. Kate? Oh, uh, oh Not man. Kate, uh, yeah, Kate Upton. Kate Upton. She had a nice dress. Did she? Yeah. I think it was a little transparent, too. Was Which it? color? Transparent. Uh, transparent. Or, yeah. Okay. Do I pull it up. Put it up. Kate uh, uh, Hudson, not Kate Hudson. What did I just say? Kate Upton. God, I hope uh, FBI doesn't look at my last couple Google. I Googled the boys, Kate Hudson. Just put <laughs> Os Oscar dresses. Oscar dresses. Oh, yeah, maybe something like that. All right, Jenny, tell us if it looks similar to to this. Because um, some of them were transparent. I don't mm, remember. Um, but my dress have a color and transparent. Okay, it's <laughs> not that one, right? No, no, okay. no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, not that one. No, 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 no. No, all right. Um, <laughs> go, it goes. Which one that's are you? How about that's transparent right there, right? Let's see that one. Hit, click it. It's not doing anything. It's not doing anything. Yeah, all right. Can you see right. that? You can't get that. No. That's transparent. You can see her stomach. Yes. So is that how your dress but, is? But but no, here and here. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I thought we might be able to click on some of the individual uh, pictures. Well, uh, what else are you doing in Vegas? Are you going to play blackjack? Yes, play bla blackjack, roulette. Roulette, I like too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like poker, but but here is no good play poker. Why not? 
because I like uh, I prefer play poker in my house, poker home. On the internet. Uh, in my house in Brazil. Here the the with, guys with your friends. Yes, oh. yes. Yeah, over so here. So fun. Over here is a business. But here no, so cereals, cereals. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he was playing poker, right? You you yeah. you can you can pay your phone. You can nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like. Oh no, no, yeah, you can't play on your phone. You get no. scoldings, man. <laughs> yeah, you have to concentrate. But in Brazil, I I won two two times last month. Yeah. Yes. A lot of poker. money. Ah, so so. Quanto? Uh, in reais. Uh, cem reais. Cem reais. That's about um, I think thirty dollars. Twenty-five. Uh, Twenty-five. Yeah, thirty dollars. Yeah. Okay. That's um, good. with friends or? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's kind of cold, so you're not going to the beach or the pool, right? Not this trip. Sorry. Um. Agora muito frio? Oh yeah. Não pode ir à piscina, no, na praia. No, no, no. In Brazil so hot. In Brazil summer. Summer, so yeah. so summer, oh. but now here? No. No bikinis. No bikini. I have bikinis in my in my bag. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, too. <laughs> oh. Maybe. You going to wear the bikinis uh, this week? Yes. Really? I like bikinis. Are the are the pools open now? <laughs> it's close. It's close. Is it? Some the, of the, the pools open. The last year early. the same the same month. It's open. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember. I I used I used bikini the last year mm -hmm. in March here mm -hmm. for a few hours. Two piece, obviously, right? Yes. Brazilian cut. Cut. Brazilian. Boom boom. No, the yeah, the Brazilian cut is more. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in America, the cut is a little more round. Or no, I don't, know. I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I prefer cut. In Brazil, oh yes. man, they they, have, they it it cuts yes. in and so cut. Is that how your bikinis are? Yes, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? boom boom? That's butt. S. Oh, it's butt. S. Ass. Oh, yeah, S. ass. <laughs> oh, okay. Boom boom bunda. Uh, bunda. Okay, okay. Boom boom. Yeah, they like they're a s. <laughs> she says boom, boom, I thought boom boom meant something else. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> no, it's uh, they call it bunda, uh -huh. but for sure they call it boom or boom boom. Boom boom. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. Have boom. you been to Brazil, Ensign? Yes. 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 You never been? Yes. Went to Rio de Janeiro. Oh. Did you see a lot of boom boom there? Well, we just went to train at Baja Gracie. Yeah. After training, ah, did you see any boom boom? <laughs> uh, not really. Yeah. Not no. Really. We just were in training. Yeah. Don't that's remember. A lot of training. No. Oh. What? Don't remember the bikinis. I remember the bikinis. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we call them. We call them here dental floss. Mm. Dental floss. You know dental floss. You floss your teeth. Oh yes, the yes, the same dental name. <laughs> 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 dental floss. <laughs> the name in Brazil yeah. is Fio Dental. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the same name. Oh, they call it that. Yes. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> Um, it's normal. <laughs> yes. Are you nervous? My bikini is are dental. Dental. Yeah. Dental Feel floor. dental. Dental. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. All right. So, are you nervous for for Thursday? Yes. Yeah. I will. T I will present her too. Oh. Yes. Do, do you know what category? No, I don't know. Hmm. Surprise. Well, if it's best media source, yes. Before you open, give MMA us, give junkie. Us a wink. <laughs> give us a wink, right? So yeah. we can stand up and put the tie on. Oh yes, yes. Walk down and get our reward. <laughs> yeah. If we lose, just go like this. Like you should go get a drink and go. <laughs> Come just back. Go like this. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just go like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it means a lot to us. We uh, we've won five of these. And but we didn't win last year, so we want to win this year. Hopefully, you all voted. I always say it's important to vote, and Where this goes for anything. Where do um, you vote? Online. WorldMMAAwards.com. Oh. But uh, yeah, you can go there and vote. It, 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 the voting's closed. Oh, sure. But I always encourage people. You know, um, I, I think the awards is good for the sport, and anybody that goes there on Thursday will see just how many fighters. Ring card girls, promoters. There's going to be a lot of people there. A lot of people uh, really, really enjoy it. I know a lot of people like to joke around. But t I'm telling you, anybody that's ever won one loves it. And we've been you lucky enough to. to win a few. And, uh, and so hopefully we win this year. But, yeah, this is one of them right here for our that's best cool. media source. Good. Yeah. Um, oh, what happened there? 
I almost fell down. So anyway, so Jenny is up for Ring Card Girl of the Year against uh, Ariane Celeste, Brittany Palmer, Carly Baker, Mercedes Terrell. Uh, so there's five of them all together. Four UFC, one Bellator, right? Four, four UFC girls yes, and one Bellator. Yes, one, one Bellator. Yes. Do you ever watch Mercedes from Bellator? Three American, no, uh, three American girls, mm -hmm. one Brazilian, mm -hmm. and one England. Do the other Brazilian girls, do they uh, get jealous that, that you got nominated? You know, is there competition? Uh, for the, the Brazilian girls? The other, there's three Brazilian girls, right? Yes. Do they, because you got nominated three times. Yes. Do they ever say anything to you? Are they ever, you know, nice about it? Like, congratulations? For no, nothing. <laughs> no? <laughs> 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 They're not nice about it. I, I, I bet you it's a little competitive, man. It nothing. It has to be. Yeah, I think yeah, so. It is, yeah. yeah, I watched a lot of you know like movies and stuff like Miss Congeniality. You see mm -hmm. the way they were, you know, will trip each other and stuff like that. <laughs> 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 like yeah, the, the <laughs> girls are catty, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Guys are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dangerous. But you're friend. You're friends with some of them, right? Friends. Yeah, some of the ring card girls are your friends. Yes. Yeah. yeah sure. Who are you cool with? Who? Who you like? Who you talk to? Oh, Ariani. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rigi? Do you know Rigi? La Cruz? Oh, yeah, yeah, Filipinas. yeah. Filipinas? Yes. Uh, yeah. Reggie. Red. 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 Reggie. Mm -hmm. Yes. Christy. Chrissy. Oh. They're Kahili. Cool. They're nice. Kahili. So nice. Brittany? Brittany. She's nice? Yes. But So the American girls are nice. The Filipino girls nice. Yes. The English girl is nice, <laughs> but the Brazilian girls are... Um... Oh. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. A little bit nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Maybe we shouldn't uh, go too Be far because down that road. Because the Brazilian girls mm. is very different to American girls, right. to England girls. Remember I, I told you I went oh to Brazil? Oh, my God. It's very, very different. Oh, my God. If Janie are nominated for the MMA Awards. Oh. Mm. Okay. When I went to Brazil... Uh, I met, you know, I met, I, I met some friends. I have a family there and they told me, they did tell me sometimes some Brazilian women can be jealous. That's why I'm asking. Yes. Yes. So I didn't know if it's jealous just of their husbands with other women or just women are w jealous of each other too. Their success. Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Jenny, there's a video of you with, with an egg and your mom have an egg i can just smash it on your head and oh you'll terrible laugh. my my hair oh my god i washed three times and the eggs eggs Still? eggs eggs could somebody walk up to you and just smash an egg on your forehead <laughs> would, would you no, consider it a crazy or a joke or something i'd be upset punchy would probably take care of them yeah why not you you're kind of tough yourself i'm retired oh you retired <laughs> from everything yeah oh Try to stay out of it. We have Jenny's uh, got one of the best Instagrams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously, mm -hmm. you follow it, and she's very active on her social media. You should I get this for your Instagram, best Instagram. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, if Instagram I, I, I had like uh, my Instagram. Oh. I like I like the social medias. I like the fans. I talk to my fans. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I like That's this. Good. That's good. This Do you is like very Snapchat? important. Uh, I don't like so much Snapchat. I, I, I prefer Instagram. So do I. Twitter. I like Instagram YouTube. first. YouTube. And then I think Facebook, then Twitter. Facebook. And, and then Snapchat. Now. I, I just can't get into Snapchat. Have you? Yes. I don't like it. I don't understand it very well. Yeah. Snapchat like only for... It disappears. Nude. 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 Oh, Only wait. for this. Oh, oh I like, I like well, Snapchat. You don't I do think nude? so. You don't do Probably. <laughs> yeah. No. So five <laughs> seconds and. You're nude finish? in your Snapchat? Whoa. <laughs> you said it's nude. If do you have boyfriend, you can send it the nudes. Oh, I see She's what you're saying. I thought she said everybody on things. Snapchat <laughs> is nude. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only for this. But you can't just send text instead of Snapchat? Text? Text, uh, text message. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Instead of a Snapchat, right? You would think. Huh. I don't know. I'm not on Snap Snapchat. But I guess I'm the Snapchat disappears. Yes. Oh, and the text stays yeah, the forever. Yeah, the text stays there. Yes. 
Yeah. Nothing disappears okay. on the internet. That's true. Nothing. Are you? Uh, what do you want? Are you on? Uh, you're on Twitter. It's I Instagram, saw that. Twitter and Facebook. Which ones do you like? I like Facebook. Facebook the most. Facebook's linked to Twitter, so I don't really go on Twitter. Do any know. girls send you nude pictures? No, not at all. <laughs> Never. Like you don't have Snapchat. No. <laughs> well, when I was a fighter, I didn't have girlfriends. It was all guys and all like underground guys. Oh really? That was my crowd. Yeah, that they came to. Me. Not even one girl baked you a cake not or nothing. Not really. Oh, back in the day, yeah, I had some pretty funny stuff, but. Fans, yeah, but not, what, what, not, what, not what did majority. fans bring you? Any any presents? Themselves. <laughs> <laughs> a few times, yeah. Well, back in the day, long ago, though, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, uh, did you have better fans in North America or in Japan? Oh, Japan mostly, yeah. 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 How about you, Jenny? Where do you have uh, more fans? That uh, in I Brazil, so. in, in the United States? or United States. Yeah? Yes. Do they ever bring Mexico, you gifts? Mexico, Mexico. Mexico, you have a yes, lot of gifts? yes. Latin oh, America. Sorry. Do they bring you Chile. gifts? Presenti? Gift? Yeah. Uh, sometimes. Like what? Uh, uh, like a... Uh, uh, Urso. Do you know Urso? No. Mm, no. Mickey, Minnie. Oh, oh like mouse. a stuffed mouse. animal. Yeah. No, Mickey, Minnie, mouse. I think she's... From, from like Disney? A yes. Yeah. A stuffed animal. Yes, yes, yes. Like, uh, okay. Candy? Yeah. A lot of candy in my hotel. If I go to Curitiba, oh, chocolate, flowers. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> we should do that too. <laughs> yeah. too. Really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> they just. Uh, but I can eat. You just had a chocolate. Oh yes, now I can. <laughs> now you can eat. Yes. Oh, why you want the dress or what? No, the, uh, because uh, I talk to Jay. Oh my God, Jenny, you are so small. Petite? <laughs> petite. Okay. Do you think? Um, petite. petite. Petite is more short, though, isn't it? No, petite is small. A small so small. Size. Oh no! It. Uh, no. I, I. Everything looks good to me. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So but ha- the guys. Oh, Jane, you are small. Very small. <laughs> Do you think so? We get that too. <laughs> am, am, I, am, I, am I petite? <laughs> you are small. Small. <laughs> small. No, go, no gordo. No gordo. My, my amigos say, "What's a gordo?" Oh, really? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> they hurt my feelings. Vanderlei Silva. <laughs> Vanderlei Silva say, oh. <laughs> "It always touches my belly." You like Vanderlei? Yeah. He's a nice guy, I isn't love he? His fight style. Man, I, I want to see him fight again. It's I've been like three years. Oh, you wanted to fight I him? I wanted to fight him so bad, yeah. But why didn't it happen? Then the pride never let it happen. Hmm. When I was gonna, when I fought Nogueira, I was supposed to fight Vanderlei. And it, at the last minute, it changed. Nogueira's going to be here Friday. Oh, yeah. Right. Antonio Nogueira's going to be oh, here right. on Tell Friday him. on uh, Friday at 11.30 here on MMA Junkie Radio. Tell him I say hello. Um, Antonio Nogueira is one of the most popular athletes in Brazil, correct? Yes. Number one's Anderson. Number one, Anderson. Number one, most yes, popular? Yes, But number yes. two is probably Noguera, you think? Or, or yeah. Jose, or who? No, Spider. Uh, Spider, Vanderlei Silva. Oh, Vanderlei, yeah. See, Antonio Shogun. Noguera was on um, Dancing with the Stars in Brazil. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He got a lot of, a lot of fame oh, from Oh, yeah, that. you get a lot of fans from that. He's really, really popular. Super popular on Instagram. All right, we're going to take this break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio. On Sirius XM, Rush 93, we have UFC Octagon Girl Jenny Andrade here in studio, and we also have MMA veteran from Pride, Ensign Inoue. We'll be right back after these short uh, messages.
What's that? I don't know. Sapphire? I think so. Oh, oh no, wait. Sapphire might be September. <laughs> Sorry. You guys want to go to Sapphire? Shine bright like a diamond. I think of a player's card when I hear Sapphire. <laughs> During the commercial break, they were probably talking smack about their next guest. But now they're going to act like they're all cool with him. <laughs> Here they are, George and Goes. <laughs> all right, here's another plug for Ensign's book, Live as a Man, Die as a Man, Become a Man, available on Amazon. And don't forget, if you go to destinyforever.com, you can pick up one of these cool bracelets uh, that Ensign makes with his bare hands. So they're handcrafted. And there's many out there. Mine's called Samurai. Goes is wearing one called Ronin. And uh, what were some of the other names of the other ones that, that you brought? Um, Ocean Dream. Ocean Dream. Shows on and Glass, Glass Glow Dream. I really like mine. So it's destinyforever.com. We were talking about Jenny Andrade. Uh, her Instagram is amazing. <laughs> so give her a follow. It's easy. It's at Jenny Andrade UFC. Jenny, J-H-E-N-N-Y. Andrade UFC. On Twitter, she's just uh, Jenny, Jenny UFC. UFC. Yeah, Jenny yes. UFC. This one's Jenny Andrade UFC. And how many Instagrams do you do a day? Like three, four, five? Or how many Instagrams? Yeah. How many pictures or videos per day? Per day, three. Three. All right, so she's very active. Uh, this was her promoting her appearance on MMA Junkie. Thank you. Yeah. That's one thank of my you. favorite ones ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, <laughs> is, this is when you arrived, right? To Vegas? Yes. Is that the win? Are you staying at the win? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I recognize the win. Uh, then she's on the phone. And then uh, what else do you have, Goes? Well, what did I click? Whoa. I don't know. What's this one? Work Workout? <laughs> workout. My uh, head. Mo modeling shoot? Yes. Any at the beach? No. No, the beach. Let's find out. Hit load more. <laughs> ah, at the pool. My home. That's your home? Yes, my my um, condominium. Oh, okay. Where do you live, Sao Paulo? Ribeirão Preto. Is that close to Sao Paulo? Yes, yes. Ribeirão Preto. Is that near the beach? No, no. no. Okay. It's beach, Ribeirão Preto. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Porto de Galinhas, my vacation. Oh, okay. Where's that in Brazil? What part? Uh, uh, Nordeste, Pernambuco. Northeast. Northeast, okay. She trains? Yes, right. Mai Tai. And she's planking right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. My uh, new tattoo. On the, where's your new tattoo? Here. This, this one? one? Yes. We can't Small see it though. Small tattoo. What does it say? What is it? A heart. 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 Okay. How many tattoos do you have? Uh, one, two, five. Five. All right. With Rhonda. Rhonda, one, the two. birthday. Ha, let's do the hula hoop. We got to play that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she's doing it well. Sun and hula poop. <laughs> I can't do that. In my house. You can't do that, Anton? I used to do it when I was small. I like so much. Good exercise? Yes. How long can you do that for? Oh, look, she does it in slow motion. <laughs> how, how long can you do that for? Ah, uh, 10 minutes per day. 10 minutes? Yes. Yeah, well, like I said, that's definitely one of my favorite Instagrams. <laughs> Good job, <Jenny>. Thank you. <laughs> All right. It's at Jenny Andrade UFC. Uh, all right, give me some predictions for the fight this weekend. This weekend, Thompson. Yeah. Thompson and Overeem. Woodley. Oh, you got Thompson. Yes, he Thompson. He beats Woodley. Okay. Yes. Overeem and Mark Hunt. Overeem. Overeem. Yes. Ferguson and Khabib. 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 All right, Anton, how about you? Uh, we only have about 20 minutes left, but uh, I want to make sure we get some predictions from you. Khabib versus Tony Ferguson. Oh, this will be a tough one. I think Ferguson, though. Ferguson wins? Yes. I Mark think. Hunt mm -hmm. and Alistair Overeem. I couldn't pick that one. That's, I would say that one, whoever hits who, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you, are you close with both guys from the Pride days? Do you know them both? They're both friends, yeah. Yeah? yeah. So you just rather not pick? Yeah, well, honestly, I wouldn't. I like, we're, we're betting on the fights, me and Punchy. Yeah. But it's like you pick because... It's up in the air, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look at the odds, it's all even, man. Except could be Ferguson. Are the odds up? It's pretty even. Okay. I think uh, th that fight's pretty even. What about um, Woodley and Thompson? <sighs> I don't know. I, I would say, uh, if I had to, I have to take a guess, I'd say Woodley. Yeah. 
I think he has the knockout power. I don't think Thompson would be able to. If anything, Thompson would pull out a decision. Mm -hmm. So Woodley would have five rounds to knock him out. Are you going to watch the fights yes, in definitely. Hawaii? I watch all the fights. Yeah? Yeah. Do you have a big pay-per-view party or do you go to a bar? No, or I just watch it at home by myself. By yourself? Yeah. You don't even invite Punchy? No, he. I'm in Japan. That's why. I am. Oh, you're going back to Japan? Yeah, he's, oh. in, he's in Hawaii. And you're, yeah. He's in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. Jenny, are you going to uh, work at the UFC? This Are you an uh, Octagon girl this week? No, no, because I will work in Brazil next week. In UFC Fortaleza. Um, after the awards, do you stay for the show? Yes. You stay for the UFC? Yes. Okay, so you have tickets. You'll go to the yes, show. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, very cool. All Just right. to watch. Yeah. And the, the next week, I will work. Mm. Mm. How come you don't work here? I've seen you work in the United States before. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know because... And she's already here, yeah. I wouldn't make her work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to work or no? Or you want to just enjoy it as a fan? I, I want to work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Does it, uh, sorry if this is personal, but does it pay well to be Octagon Girl? Good money? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Is it per show or for the year? This is a contract for the uh, year. Per show, per day. Per show, per day. Per day. Eight oh. waging. How the many fives. years have you done it now? Are you, are you, is it five years? or Four years. Four years? Yes. You like? Four years. Yes, I love. I oh, love, I love, flies, I love. Huh? It does fly. I remember when she was the new girl. <laughs> Do yeah. you remember? Time flies. How long has Ariani been doing it? At least 10 years, Ooh, right? Yeah, I think so. Because wow. she started she when goes we started. She goes back to uh, the Ultimate Fighter, I think, right? Like around that time? She mm -hmm. looks so different. <laughs> wow. Ariani? <laughs> From when she started until now, it's like, who's that? Yeah. There's so much changes. Right? Yeah, yeah, I hear you there. Yeah. Um, uh, good no. changes, though, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she looked good when she started. What What are the changes we talking about? I think she got a boot job, right? Yes. And then uh, I think her face changed, yeah. I think they. I liked I her face the before. The lips. I think it the was lips. already nice, you know, and mm. then there were changes. Nice now too, but the girls like to do the lips now. Yes, right? I I don't like. I don't like. But have, the have girls. Have you ever done the lips? But never. Never. But the girls love, 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 love. Mm -hmm. I don't like. I think so. It's very different. What? They make it puckery. Here, mm -hmm. here, here. <laughs> like a duck. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Right? Uh, some of the girls, when it doesn't go good, it's like a duck. <laughs> like a pato. <laughs> yes. No, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's good. Man. Have you ever seen the Kardashians? High charge. <laughs> yeah, they can't move, right? High charge. It's frozen. <laughs> it's frozen. Have you seen the? Have you ever seen the Kardashians? <laughs> no, really. There's one girl. Can you pull oh, up, can you pull up uh, the, the younger girl? Oh, and the The younger girl. The younger girl. Look at the transformation she makes. Just oh from the really? lips. Watch. Yeah, Pull her up. Google searches you guys got me doing here. <laughs> and the boom boom. The ass. Oh, so much um, big. The, the Kardashians. You think they, uh, that's Too surgery? The car yes. I think it's natural, no? The Kardashians? I think it's just the family's got booty, you know? Oh, I no. think. I don't know. No, no, no. But, well, although there's one of them, the tall one, maybe. Maybe. I don't they know. They could make surgery on the ass? They, yeah. It's, yeah. it's really? implants. The implant in the ass? Some yeah. people do calves, Reti too. Uh, uh, retire. Retire. Tira daqui e coloca aqui. Oh, that, they, oh. So they can take I the say? fat here and they move it there. Yeah, yes. they remove from here and put it here. Wow, it's crazy stuff they can do nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. This is wow. very, yeah. very simple uh. now. This, uh, uh, actually. Y you know, no? no? No, never. <laughs> all, all natural? Natural. Oh. Only my boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Do you have it? <laughs> <laughs> Boops. <laughs> Boops, yeah. Boops. <laughs> All right. Well, he's not able to pull it up then. It's kind of frozen. All right. We're going to go to another commercial. All right. So, Jenny, good luck on Thursday. Thank I you. I hope you uh, – we can't wait to see the dress, and I hope you win the ring card girl of the year. I think you do really good work for the company. You're very active um, as a hostess. You know, you promote the company all the time. You know who the fighters are. Uh, it, 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 you treat your job very serious. Thank you so much, guys. And I'm you're so very good with the fans too. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I'm so happy to be here now. To be here again. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. See you. All right. Thank all you. All on thur thur Thursday. On Thursday, yeah. Yes. Well, Thursday uh, is the World MMA Awards, and Jenny's up for Ring Card Girl of the Year. We're up for Best Media Source. We also have a colleague of ours, Ben Folks, up for Journalist of the Year. So we're going to take this last break. When we come back, we'll finish up some, some calls and some questions. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93.
Bye bye. Don't wake me. I'm dreaming. They were kicked off the set of The Fast and the Furious for being too loud and too good looking. Once again, here's gorgeous George and Goes. Man, I look like a fool trying to say my goodbyes. In Brazil, it's custom to kiss on the left and the right. And in my effort to do it, it honestly looked like one of those guys in high school that is trying to score that kiss. Screwing with her. Yeah, he's oh, like, oh, you uh-huh. went straight down the middle? No, no, no. I went left. Uh-huh. And then I, I, we did it earlier when, she, when, I first said, <laughs> when I first said hello. I went like, we always do that because she knows I've been to Brazil. Uh, There's some Brazilians in our family, you know, and, and I, I have friends there. So I know the <laughs> culture, right? So when I, when I did it, I do it with Joey's girlfriend too, Lulu. So I saw it. I go, kiss, kiss, no problem. But here it was like, kiss, kiss. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I thought you were belly rubbing her. <laughs> I thought, well, that, is that uh, a good? That no, because in New Zealand, they rub noses, yeah? Do they? In New Zealand? Yeah, they, 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 it's a honey. They, they kiss and they breathe in each other's spirits, like. Really? So I, when you were doing that, I thought no. it was a good Brazilian thing when they rubbed their stomachs together. I was saying my goodbye, but these guys are like, look at this joker trying <laughs> yeah. to get a quick one in there. And that, that was not the case I at all. I thought that was kind of funny, too. W- what a nice girl, though, right? Yeah, she's really nice. She's yeah. cool, man. She she lets us know when she's in town. She loves to do the show. Look, cool. even, if I, even if I were to find out down the road that she can't stand us, I still think she's brilliant in the fact that when she's in Vegas, she makes the most out of it. She hits a popular show and comes in. She's very active on her social media. I like it when people get it. You know what I mean? You know how earlier you said there's an entertainment aspect that you're not so crazy about? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people aren't. But then there's a lot of people that also realize that it's also a, a, an, an avenue towards making a fortune, I guess. Or, yes, or, or yes, you know, yes. it can be lucrative. And so that, that I can respect that um, she's, like, look, she's there taking pictures with the fans. She does that very well. Um, she prepares very well. Like I, I was very impressed when I saw that. You know, she's saying, "Hey, look, catch me at this time, yeah. or whatever." Like uh, I, I, I get, I get. Well, no, no, no. I, I, I get. We, we promoted <laughs> you all. The same outfit. It was a cut off. Uh, like she's, she's just very sharp. You know what I'll I mean? I'll do that next time, shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's very, very sharp, and and uh, a lot of fighters kind of get that part and enjoy that part. Others don't get it. You know, what I liked about it. her. She kept. She said like three times that she's. The fans are important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I heard you so say that earlier. Oh, yeah. It's so important. The, the, the fact that she's, init- I mean, recognizing that, that the fans pretty much make her, mm-hmm. right? So Yeah, they're the ones awesome, that will, right? you know, they'll support you. If you're good to them, they'll support you back. And she's always been really, really cool to you're our surprised show. surprised a bunch of fighters don't realize that. I know. Yeah, they, they won't sign sig- autographs or they'll, they'll shun fans. I mean, yeah. The fans make fighters. Th- right? there, there I think they lose touch with reality a little bit. I think so yeah. too. No, that happens. I think so too. Because Fame and fortune. Think about it. Mm-hmm. If you're at the World MMA Awards or if you're at the UFC, what I don't like is the fighters that just they don't seem to understand. If you have to be somewhere at, at eight PM, you better leave your hotel room at seven and enjoy the walk there. Because you know what? If people recognize you, they are gonna want to take a picture or talk to you or whatever. So don't leave at seven fifty five and then be shocked that you can't get somewhere by eight. Because people want to talk. Those are the same people that you want to buy your pay-per-view. Yes, Those are the yes, same people that yes, you want to tune yes. in to your, you know, because when you go to, when it's time to renegotiate a contract, what do you tell the UFC? Hey, people buy my pay-per-view. People do this. People do that. I get high ratings. I get high this, high that. You know, that there's, I, I don't know. I just think that it, it works both ways. Mm-hmm. I think the athletes should realize it that. It goes further back than that because if there's no fans, there's no promotion. If there's no promotion, nobody needs fighters. So It's true. Got to take care of the fans, man. Yeah. Appreciate what they they do. And the fans got to take care of the fighters. And you know how they do that? They go and they buy this book. <laughs> Live yeah. as a man, die as a man, become a man. We teased the story before Jenny got here. That's right. Yeah, let's finish that uh, part. So Ensign's in, in Pride, and he's there with his brother. Um, where were we at in that story? Guy Metzger. Oh, Guy Metzger. Yeah. Uh, kind of calls you out a little bit on the mic, but mm-hmm. he was put up to that yes. by someone in Pride. And we left it at that. And now it's kind of about Ensign trying to figure out who actually did this because this upset you a lot. Yes, it did. Was it? Let's start yeah. at the top. Saki Kabara. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he. Well, they tried to. Um. They pushed it all over the place. Saki Kabara at the end even didn't admit to me that it was him. So you go in the back, and you ask for a pride official, right? And I think yes. they they bring one at one at a time. I asked for the president. Morishita. He was alive at the time. Okay. I asked for the president. It went straight to the top. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the middle of the, the whole show. 
and they have those little guys with mics that that are like being paid like five bucks an hour just to help help control things in there mm -hmm. and so i'm telling that guy to get the president and then i think i kicked him in the ass or something yeah i told him to get the, get the, to get the president, president now wow and he went out and he came back with someone else came back and i said you know where is the president and then i told the guy if you you don't get the president i'm going to beat you up and then so he ran out and kawasaki came in he was like a matchmaker and i just grabbed him and threw him on the ground and kind of tell him i need the president here now and so he leaves and then sakakibala comes in which is actually the president. Marista was just like a, a name just in place. Saki Kibala was always doing everything for Pride. Mm -hmm. The guy who's running, really rising now, yeah? So he said that he doesn't know. Um, I heard later it was him. But he told me that he, he doesn't know who it is. They'll find out who it is. Someone in the office told Mensker that and, and all this all this shit. Mm -hmm. And I met him a day later in the hotel lobby. In the Saki Kibala? Yeah. And I, and I was thinking to myself, man... You got to give me like a grand or two grand to apologize. I'm not going to forgive him. And he came up with a envelope way thicker than that. So it was pretty cool. That was the apology? Yeah. Um, yeah. But he never came out and actually said it nope. was him, right? Nope. But at least I knew. Now, what if he just would have said, I'm sorry, Anson. That's not good enough? That would have been good enough. Oh, that would have been good enough. Oh, so the rest was just a little bonus. Yeah, well, that was nice. Oh, okay. But he, if he just sincere, sincerely told me he's sorry. Well, you know, so... The, the the money was a gesture that showing that he's he's gonna own up to his mistake, but because he didn't own up 100, percent it it kind of classified my my relationship with him. Yeah, so I'll still have a relationship, but it won't be like in a in a real deep relationship because it's not someone that I could trust. Oh. That's things that was years ago. Things haven't been cleared up. Are you guys on a different level now, or is it still fractured? I guess. No, well, uh, yeah, I've, I've talked to him after that, okay. and it's okay. I mean, I'm supporting what he does because I want to support MMA. Anything that's going to be good for MMA. So I, I go to his shows. I go to all, He gives me tickets for all the shows. I go and support the shows. Another story that I read in the book that I, I wanted you to kind of elaborate a little bit on was your relationship with the Gracies. You have, you have a good relationship. Oh, yeah. But there were times where you felt like they were open to teaching, but maybe not the, to their best of ability of maybe mm -hmm. perhaps – letting uh, certain secrets come out of why techniques are a certain way. And you tell mm -hmm. a story of them actually coming in and stopping a training session because mm -hmm. they didn't want you to learn <laughs> something. Can you kind of like explain how all that went about? And Yeah, well, my idea of us teaching a student is to teach them. And even if the student becomes better than you, it's like, a, it's like a, the ultimate success. Yeah, mm -hmm. But um, it was different. I mean, maybe Horian had the business aspect uh, too much on focus. Because he would, I would hear him tell House and things like, "You're teaching him too much. He's learning too fast." I'm like, "How can you learn too fast? How can you teach your student too much?" And there was an incident I wrote in the book about when Hoist came over. I used to live at House and House, watching the videos, and I mean, we were like brothers. Yeah. And just so people know, uh, the Gracie brothers, there's like six or seven of them. Helson, I believe, is the second oldest. It's Horian's yes. the oldest. Yeah. Helson is a guy who uh, opened up an academy in Hawaii, and yeah. so that that's how we're putting the pieces together. Yes, yeah. And so you, that's where you learn, and that's where you spend a lot of time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I was there, and uh, um, Hoist and Hoyler would always visit, and every time they would visit, I would pull them in the garage and try to train them and, and weed out some information from them to learn more. And one day I put uh, Hoist into Helson's garage and we were rolling, rolling. He was showing me a lot of stuff. And it was funny because Horian came in and said something to him in Brazilian. And then Hoist turned to me and said, uh, I can't teach you anymore, my friend. And that was it. And that was kind of kind of tri tripped me out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a, uh, it's obviously a business for them at that time. Yeah. So yeah. What's your relationship with him now? Oh, fine. I, Egan gets along really well with Hoyce. Yeah. Uh, we had a Egan had a problem with Helson. Um, I've squashed that. I'm at my age now, you know. Damn, that's know. crazy too. Because I heard of all of them, Helson was one of the more fiery ones. Like he's mm -hmm. one of the ones that could boast of having lots of street fights as well. Mm -hmm. So is we that almost, is that uh, behind behind closed quarters, or can you share what that's about? Uh, no, yeah. Well, Egan the, Egan had a problem with uh, Helson, and Helson. The reason why I broke her from Helson is because he gave me a choice of I got to pick Egan or got to pick him. Helson did? Yeah. You got to pick your brother or him? Exactly. What to train with? Exactly. Like to be friends or to be associated with. Oh, because they had beef. Yeah. And okay. if you're going to be friends with Egan, which is my brother, then you got to cut from us. So I walked out the door that day. And it was heartbreaking wow. for me because 
I thought he was like a brother to me. I gave him one of my cars. I did most of his seminars in Hawaii because he couldn't speak English. So I did a lot of his seminars in Hawaii with him as a blue belt, speaking the English, doing the commentary for it, everything. And but now you guys are cool. Well, yeah. We, there was a there was a point where I really wanted to hurt him, to a point where I would have went the two extremities to hurt him. Why did Egan and him beef? It was about a video. It was about Egan. They, they claimed that Egan videoed a seminar that they didn't allow. Okay. And when Egan brought the seminar, he said he was doing it for them. And when he brought the seminar, they, they accused him of dubbing the tape. Wow. And that's that was a beef. So I never had a beef with Helsin or any of them until that happened. And then Helsin made me choose, and I, I chose to be with my brother, of course. Yeah. So... <laughs> You guys couldn't have played a game of racquetball or something? Like <laughs> I that? know, really, huh? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, like years let later. Him, let, let them get to like 10 or 11 and then, you know, finish it out. Years later, after, um, you know, I decided to squash it. So I approached Helson and said, you know what? I will hope you wish you the best. And with everything we had, we, there's good times and bad times. I just wish you the best. I just squashed everything. He shook my hand. We squashed it. Wow. Interesting stuff, man. <laughs> what, what I saw in the book was there were a lot of stories that talked about the media and mm-hmm. your relationship with the media. Mm-hmm. And one that stood out for me was. Before your Randy Couture fight, mm. nobody really gave you too much of a chance. Yes. And it almost seemed like the comments coming from the media is what kind of fueled your fire inside mm. to prove everyone wrong. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about, y- you talked about that being one of the greatest training camps ever mm-hmm. up until a moment where you're training hard and you pop your shoulder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, talk about your emotions when you pop that shoulder, knowing that this could mean that possibly for most people, they can't compete in the match, but you went on. Yeah, well, when I popped my shoulder, the the, the idea of not fighting never came into my head. It's just I just thought I gotta get this healed as much as possible. So now I know I'm gonna have to fight with an injury, but I'm gonna try to take care of it, baby it as much as I can, so I can be closest to 100% before the fight. So yeah, it was it was unfortunate, but it didn't affect me. A lot of fighters talk about the kind of oh shit moment in a match. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the beginning of the fight, how you had envisioned over and over to throw that inside leg Mm -hmm. kick and show this wrestler something that he's probably never seen. Mm -hmm. You threw it. You felt like it came out perfect, but he kind of just shook it off. Yeah. What was that moment like? Uh, It was, well, my thing was I was most worried about his dirty boxing because prior to that, he's, he beat Vitor on like dirty boxing. So I was more worried about that. Did a lot of Greco for that. And I was worried about that. I, went, I was okay to go to the ground. So when he when he took me to the ground, it was like almost like a, a blessing in disguise. Yeah. I taped. I put a whole roll of tape on my leg. My leg was like a cast. So I was envisioning walking in there and just stepping in and inside leg kicking, and breaking his leg, but didn't break. Wasn't that a, <laughs> wasn't that his first loss? Yes, it was his first loss. Um, so I, I was describing this before the show. I think there's certain matchups in MMA that you can point to that kind of revolutionized the sport. And I always say that that was a fight where you can look at it and you could say, that's where Randy said, oh, shit, I got I got to work on submission defense. I got to learn what this guy showed me in that fight. Another one is Tito Ortiz and Frank Shamrock. That mm-hmm. was the fight that everybody said, wow, you got to get your conditioning down yeah, no shit for MMA. Yeah. And I feel like that's one of the fights that you can point to in mixed martial arts and say a big lesson was learned not just for Randy Couture that night, yeah. but for everyone. Yeah, definitely. I I um, I've I've told Goes that I I've been having this itch to go down memory lane with uh, chronologically the UFC Pride, mm-hmm. maybe WEC Strike Force, uh, uh, Bellator. Who knows? And just kind of consume those events because when I hear stories like yours, it reminds me of the past and how I felt yeah, about it. Yeah. And so when Randy came on uh, to the UFC and mm-hmm. won. And then I heard, and then you start to wonder, why aren't some of these guys coming back? And you start hearing that in Japan, you know, uh, they have fighting as well. And they've had it for many years. It's just uh, not to the level of what the UFC was doing here or anything that we were exposed to. And I still remember it was an Internet web page because I, I just couldn't watch the fight. When I saw that he lost, I was like, who's that guy? <laughs> oh, really? You know, because, like, <laughs> Randy had really make, made an impression yes, yes, here yes, in the yes. United States. You know, he was Captain America. I mean, they, they, you know what, man? I'm <laughs> telling you, the announcers did a good job because there was two months before every event, so there was a buildup. And then fight night, I thought the announcers did a great job of putting the fighters over so that the casual fan could consume. And, and you have to make them larger than life. Uh-huh, Except uh-huh. I think the UFC's kind of tailed off on that a little bit mm-hmm. because they realize, wait, 
If it gets too big and we have contract disputes, you know, Tito, Tito Ortiz, great example. When when he was not fighting, the UFC was hurting financially, mm -hmm. and I think they made they made a, a, a conscientious decision to make the UFC bigger than the fighters and also to make Dana White a star. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, the UFC losing Randy Couture at the time, I just remember going, oh, no, like, mm -hmm. that just can't happen. Uh, and then once you beat him, I was probably one of those novice fans that said, wow, well, who's this guy? Who's, who's <laughs> this guy so I can jump on his bandwagon? You know, I just wanted to know who's the best because I thought in the 90s, in the early to mid to late 90s, everybody was still proving it. And whoever could get that key win was kind of the man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was a big win for me. Yeah. So I'll tell you what. Can you do five minutes of overtime? Yeah, no problem. I have one more story I want him to go over. So why don't we uh, wrap this up? And Does we'll Sam do know how to do that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sam, so you know what we're going to do. We're going to exit at 5730. And uh, you bring us back, and we'll do another five minutes of overtime here with Ensign Anyway. I do want to thank Jenny Andrade for her time. She came to the studio. And, again, she's up for a ring card girl of the year at the World MMA Awards. Too, too, too late to vote, but still keep her uh, in your thoughts. Hopefully she'll take that down. Ariani's been uh, hard to take down. I don't think she's ever lost for one time. Maybe uh, Brittany Palmer took that took that trophy home. So definitely, man, she's uh, – She's the pillar over there, but all the girls are trying to gun for uh, that award. I know it would mean a lot to them. So thank you to her, and thank you to Anson for his time. We're going to stick around for some overtime, and we're just going to exit for about 20, 30 seconds, and we'll be right back. Girls will have more stories to share. Las Vegas with your neon flashing and the one on band that's crashing all those homes down the drain. Fever, Las Vegas turning day into nighttime, turning night into daytime. If you see it once, you'll never be the same again. All right, yeah. we're back. We're clear for some overtime. Overtime. Go so ahead, Gus. What do you have? Two stories I wanted to talk about. One, he titled, I think he titled it The Robbery. And the first thing I thought was, which judge screwed up? But it was actually a guy who tried to rob someone at uh, a, yeah. a pawn shop, right? Yeah, yeah. And you happened to just witness the, the whole scenario. Yeah. Can you tell that story? Yeah, I was uh, I actually played Pachinko, and then I was changing my chips or whatever they're called to change it to money. And I saw a guy run out of a pawn shop, and an old man run after him and fall and start screaming, as a burglar, as a burglar. Stop him, stop him. But the guy was down the street already. I remember the green jacket. He was disappearing. Hawaii during or Japan? The, Japan. Okay. And I went and helped the old man up. And he's, oh, my God, he took my jewelry. He took my jewelry. And I'm like, I can't. The guy's gone. The guy turned the corner. It's like, oh, damn. So I just felt bad for him. Helped him up. Put him in the shop again. And just started to walk home. And I just thought, um, um, maybe instead of going straight home, I'll take that roundabout route. Maybe I'll run into the guy by chance. And took that roundabout route and I heard footsteps behind me on the alley and I turned around and it, it just like my, my heart almost stopped because I turned around that guy with the green jacket was running towards me and now my mind was racing like what am I going to do what am I going to do and back in the day I used to do a lot of bad shit and my, wor my, my worst pet peeve would be someone that's not involved getting involved and like stopping me from doing that you know so I was thinking to myself okay what am I going to do? I'm going to stop this car. I'm going to let him run by. What am I going to do? And as I'm thinking, this guy's getting closer and closer. And when he just got on the side of me, just instinctively, I just kind of clotheslined him, grabbed him, took him to the ground and mounted him. Oh, so all he was going to do was pass you? Yeah, I was walking down. He was running up behind I me. I see. Okay. And I turned around and saw him coming. I was like, holy shit, what am I going to do? And he kept running. And as he got closer, I thought, oh, shit, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And as soon as he got right to me, I just grabbed, turned around and grabbed him, took him down, mounted him. <laughs> and I love it when people talk in BJJ turns <laughs> <street fights. laughs> and then I, his hands he was fussing with his hands so I was afraid he was grabbing for a knife or something so I got real hard on him and pinned him really hard like on his face pushed his face to the side and then I, when I had control I called 911 called the police and waited for the police to come and I noticed he threw the a necklace in, in the bushes and I held him and <laughs> I guess I was afraid of him pulling out a knife out of his pocket so I had him pinned to a point where he couldn't move. And I guess it was hurting him because I had so much pressure on him that he actually yelled at me and said, call the police, call the police. <laughs> he'd rather go oh, to, he wanted, yeah. He'd rather go to the police. And when the police came, they screamed at me, get off of him, get off of him. I'm like, I'm the one who called. Mm -hmm. And it was a lady cop. 
And he said, I'm the one who called. She turned around and ran back, I guess, to the car or whatever. Three policemen came. And then I got off and they apprehended him. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the reason I bring the story up, because when you were describing this, you were saying that your spirit is in the bracelets. And mm -hmm. I was wondering if the decision that you made, you were going back and forth whether or not you should do it. Could you say it was like your spirit is what reacted in the moment? Yeah, definitely. And I think my spirit naturally is a spirit that, it, like that kanji in, your, in the middle of your bracelet, that Yamato Damashi kanji, it means the samurai spirit. And people think of the samurai spirit as being a powerful spirit, a spirit that doesn't give up. But what people don't understand, that spirit also encompasses compassion, integrity, honor. So I'm, I'd like to believe that that's what my spirit decided at that time, to have integrity in the whole situation. Uh, and the last one I wanted to cover, because I want people to buy the book, man. It's an awesome book. <laughs> the article, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, is it the Shukan Post? Shukan Post, yeah. Or this is more of like a tabloid. It's like an inquirer. Magazine. Okay. Yeah. So one of those guys actually came to your gym, mm -hmm. but said that they wanted to interview you. But instead, mm -hmm. they kind of just lurked outside, right? And mm -hmm. uh, Can you tell that story? Well, um, it was a big thing because, one, my student... Yamamoto kid, he was in a big controversy with the Yakuza, got kicked out of his college and suspended from wrestling for a year because of the incident. And by the way, this is Norifumi Yaku uh, Yamamoto, Yamamoto yeah. kid Yamamoto, who uh, has fought in the UFC before. Yeah, uh, and, and Pride. Okay. At the same time, he's your brother-in-law, right? Yes. Okay. Or oh, was my brother? -in -law. Was your brother-in-law? And at the same time, um, the girl that I was dating, which is his sister, was still in a marriage that haven't hasn't been legally in the divorce so these shukan post guys love that that gossip and controversy mm -hmm. so they came to get that interview and they came to get the fact that i'm actually dating her when she's not divorced that was a big thing and if they called and asked for an interview the proper way that to ask for an appointment i would have probably denied it they knew it so they just came into my gym in the parking lot and started trying to get questions from people walking in and out and i was sparring and i in fact my ex-wife at the time, when she was walking in, they kind of startled her by approaching her with a question. So she ran in, called me, and I got up, went into the parking lot, found the guy, grabbed him. He gave me his card. He said, you come post. He said, I, wanna I just wanted to do an interview. I said, you didn't do it the proper way. I said, so I was pissed off. So I brought him in the gym. As soon as he stepped in the door, I locked the door. And I just told him that you made a big mistake because you see that big mat over there? It's not assault. On that mat, it's called sparring. And I brought him on that mat and taped up my hands. And we didn't really do anything. <laughs> taped up the hands. We didn't really do anything because he eventually, before anything, I maybe I took him down, put a trim on the mat a couple of times. Well, just the fear alone. Yeah, right, and, uh, and pretty well, much made almost at a point where I was about to hit him, and he admitted to everything that it was about this, this, and that. And I, and I just told him, hey, if that's the case, that's, you're not allowed granted interviews to leave. And do it properly next time. And he left. And I thought it was over. And I got a call from the Shukan Post. It sounded like Yakuza, man. Just screaming at me. We're going to fuck up your life. We're going to fuck. We're going to sue you. And whoa, whoa, whoa. The Shukan Post has those ties? Or they were trying to act like that? No, they're acting. There was one of theirs that probably has ties too, yeah. Oh, wow. So they called me and they said that if you don't. And I just got over an assault of another reporter that wrote shit about me. Mm -hmm. So I was already on the, like, walking on ice. And they told me that. If you don't uh, grant the interviews with them now, the article is going to be about you assaulting our writer. And they pretty much made my decision. They're asking me to throw uh, two people that I care about under the bus to save my ass. And they just made my decision that they're not getting an interview. And I did it in a big court case or not. And I actually lost that court case. And the decision came out like five years later. And that was right before Nogero fight. And because I became a so-called criminal in Japan terms because I was I was charged with uh, the assault they wouldn't they couldn't show my fight on TV and you know for pride that's huge for them uh, one of the big TV fights the time, right? yeah one of the fights can't be shown but pride was totally cool about it. they honored my still gave me my fight money and let me fight but they couldn't televise it did anything ever come about that you ever run into that guy ever again in your no, life never or nothing? never and I'm over it, too. If I do, it's not a problem. Anymore. And the so problem the kid had, you were able to broker him yes. not being in trouble anymore, Yes, right? he shot a Yakuza guy in the face with a BB gun. And they went to his school. They cornered him in his apartment. And because of the ties that I have, there are people that I could call to 
bring it down. Mm -hmm. That's what happened because he was a year he couldn't wrestle. Mm -hmm. So I put him into a minute, told him, hey, why don't you just do this? Because it's almost like wrestling, so you won't lose your timing. You'll still be fit. Try this out. And he fell in love with it in that year. And the funny thing about that is his father called me the next year and said, in two years, this is going to be in the Olympics. Can you? We need a kid to come back to the Olympics. So I, I mean, to, to wrestling. So I call, talk to kid, and he told him, I don't want. I want to fight. And you know, if you're going to fight for something in the Olympics, you got to have your heart in it. And he didn't. So I told the dad that I'm going to support him what he does, and the dad totally disowned him. Totally just disowned him because he wouldn't go back to wrestling. And what's super ironic right now is that's the guy who's who caused the fallout between me and kid. And that's the guy who's like walking into his corner with him. The guy who told didn't want him to do MMA is because now he's making money in it. The dad is supporting him like he. You, there's a fallout between you and kid. Yeah, there's a fallout between me and kid. Oh. I just didn't like the. I didn't agree with his loyalty issues, and my loyalty issues. My loyalty standards are really high. So the fact that he didn't have the same standards as me isn't bad. Yeah. It's just that he wasn't on my level, so I didn't want to associate with that. So the theme that I took from the book. Mm -hmm is that there are some things that turn out well for you mm -hmm. and some things that turn out bad for you. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you feel like you've done the right thing and even in the situations when bad stuff happens to mm -hmm. you, like you said, I'm over it. And it seems like a lot of the times when you're over it, it's because you feel like you made the right decision. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it panned out for you, mm -hmm. it looked like you could take peace in the fact that you feel you were right. Mm -hmm. Is that yes. a good assessment? Or? Yes. The big reason for my book is because I misunderstood I misunderstood to be a yakuza. I misunderstood to be crazy. I misunderstood to be mean. And there's some stories that you could hear that would justify a lot of those things. But the reason why I wrote the book is because I want people to understand exactly what I'm thinking, exactly what I feel. I wrote good and bad things in it. And even the, you know, the fact that people think I'm this guy that has no fear and has feels no pain. And that's why I go into detail with all my fights, what was going on through my head, what I was thinking during the fight, after the fight, before the fight. And people will read that and say, wow, shit, he's just like us, man. He has fears just like us. And he hits those down, low, down points. He has some good times, you know. And I just wanted it to be understood. And I just, my frame of thinking, I'm not saying it's the right way to do it. I'm not telling you to think like me. But I just want people to understand. It wasn't for money. I'm not, it, you know, you have just noticed it hasn't been, like, pushed out, like, I want to make money on this book. I, I just want the people that know who I am, that want to understand me, have a chance to understand me. I mean, the only time you're going to really understand me is if you can hang out with me. But not all the fans can do that. So if they pick up the book, it's like hanging out with me. They'll understand a lot about me, about my way of thinking. And, you know, a lot in book one has changed. So book two is happening now, and there's going to be a change in my thinking in book two. Yeah. How I felt for my stepson, how I feel for him now. How I thought about, you know, my if you if you look go into the book, you'll you'll notice that women to me were just an object for sex and for fun, and wasn't something that to love. And there's no true love between men and women. That was my belief. I think you call them your weakness, right? Yeah, they're women. I thought women are weaknesses to men. But now I got a I got an awesome girlfriend. My girlfriend from New Zealand, Sarah, and she's awesome, man. And there is love between men and women. I found it with her, you know, so. It's changed, you know. So the bad, the, when I, she helped me write this book, I mean, publish it. And when I was writing it, that part about men and women, I was looking at her like, man, I'm sorry. but And she's, I said, do you want me to take all that shit out? She goes, no, that's how you felt, right? And I mean, I can see people saying, holy shit, if that's how he feels about women, his girlfriend now, where does he stand, you know? But, but people don't understand there's a change. So in book two, like book one ended at 2005. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot in book two, the, the prison, my pilgrimage, the walk across Japan, meeting Sarah, my jiu-jitsu journey, you know, so. MMA Junkie Radio. <laughs> MMA Junkie Radio. <laughs> the support I get from well, them. When does that come out, book two? Um, I'm about 75% done. Cool. So hopefully within this year. Have you uh, checked on your health from no. your trips up north? Do you ever go to the doctor and just go, am I no. okay? No. I hate the doctor. Do I you? should, though. Yeah, I really should. I've been told. Here's it's why. funny. I've been now you, 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 you talked about your love for Sarah mm -hmm. and how a lot of it's changed. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, you want to probably spend as many years as you can with Sarah. It's funny right? you say that, man. You know, before I met Sarah, I was willing to die the next day. I didn't really care. I just felt that I did three times the amount of a normal man. I seen three times the amount of most normal men. And I just felt that if there was the right situation, 
that I could die for a friend or die for my honor, I'd die tomorrow. And I had no problem with it, but now I do have a problem with dying because I do not want to leave her. We'll end on that. Yeah, Thank man. you so much for stopping <laughs> by. Right on. Thank man. you for the gift. Oh, yeah. no problem, man. And, uh, you know, all the wisdom and, and the stories you share. We really, really appreciate it. And thank it. you guys for what you do for the sport MMA, man. Thank I mean, you. that sport made my life, and that sport made me who I was, who I am today. And I just, I'm grateful to guys like you guys who's making that sport and, and bringing that sport out. I thank mean, you thank very you. much. Yeah, thank you guys. Man. Anytime uh, that seat's yours, so you let us know next time you're in <laughs> I'll town. I'll let you know when you, I'm in town again. I don't know we'll when the next lights, time we'll is. We'll talk about everything, uh, whatever I'll you want. I'll send you a text, man. Awesome. All right. right on, man. That's Instant hey, Anyway. Thank you. Thank Follow you. him on Twitter at Instant Anyway. And that's our show for today. Thanks, Sam, for staying overtime. Thanks to all the listeners who hung with us. Uh, DestinyForever.com, MMAJunkie.com. Check them all out. We'll be back tomorrow uh, in about 22 hours. Until then, go out there and be champions.